Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. Today I'm going to show you another version of a hanging hand towel. About a year or so ago, I did a hanging tea towel. It's a tea towel that's cut in half and it's got fabric on top. It loops over the handrail of your oven and it's actually been one of my best sellers. The hanging towel holder that I'm going to show you today is much quicker, uh, uses less fabric and it's going to be a lot more cost effective when it comes to time and material. Hang around and I'll show you how to make this hanging towel holder much more simplified than the previous one. The previous one is a really good hanging tea towel. I'll pop a link up here so that you know what that one looks like. You've probably already done a heap of them yourself. This one here, if you're starting to sell, is going to make your productivity a lot more efficient than the previous one. Plus it's a great one for gifts as well stick around. Okay here is what we need. I have one tea towel. This one here measures 14 inches by 24 inches and we're going to be cutting it in half down the center. So it doesn't actually matter what size tea towel you use and if you just want to use a shorter hand towel you can do that as well. I'm going to show you how to account for that when you're doing your folding with the towel that you might have. So one tea towel this will actually make two hanging towels. For each of the hanging towels, you need a piece of fabric that is seven inches wide by 14 inches long. And you wanna have some stabilizer on the back. It only needs to be a very light stabilizer. So I've just used a lightweight dressmakers interfacing. So this is what I use when I you know, interface my collars and, and necklines on my dresses. Uh, so it's just a lightweight interfacing fused to the back of the fabric. And then I have a magnetic closure. If you don't have one of those, then you can use Velcro. So just get a strip of Velcro that is about three quarters of an inch in width and about an inch to an inch and a half in length. So that's all we need. Fabric, a closure or Velcro and a tea towel. The first thing you want to do is cut this in half. So just fold your towel in half. Make sure it lines up top and bottom and then you can just go and cut straight across. Now I've already done that on this towel here. So there's my half towel. I'll set that one aside. I'll make a big batch later. What we want to do is take some measurements on this one here, fold it in half and place a pin in the center. Now I'm making this towel to measure the seven inches that I've got across here. So I want my towel to measure no more than six and a half inches in width to be able to fit inside here. So if you've got a much bigger towel and you're doing your folds and you can't get it in there, either make bigger folds or make your the width of your fabric half an inch bigger. And I'll explain that in a minute. So we found our center. Then I'm going to mark a pin two and a half inches from the center. So I've just marked it, my 10 inch mark on my ruler. I'll come out two and a half inches, pop a pin in there, this is actually very quick to do. So one, two and a half inches along here. Then I need another pin one and a half inches from there. So we've got half and one and same at this side. We want one and a half inches. And from there, we want to measure one inch. And then we're going to fold some pleats. Now, the other thing you can do here is just to do a couple of rows of really long running stitches and then pull it all together to gather it in the center. And then you can just ease it out to the width that you'd like. So it's up to yourself which way you do this. We're working with the fabric faced down. And the reason for that, because it's got a picture on it, I'd like the pleat in the front to show as much of that picture as I can. If I work with my fabric faced up, then this pleat is going to be faced down and you won't get to see as much of that print. So what we've got here again, just to recap, we've got our center position. We've marked a pin two and a half inches from that, then one and a half inches and then one inch. And then we've repeated that on this side. With your pins in place here, we're going to take the pins that are two and a half inches from the center and bring them toward the center. This is where you can actually manipulate your fabric and play with it uh, to make that center pleat as wide or as narrow as you like. If you find that your fabric is too narrow, then you can actually widen that pleat. Take this two and a half inch pin, bring that across to the center and just have that sitting about three eighths of an inch from the center. Pin that in place, take this one here and we'll bring that across as well 
and we'll have that sitting about three eighths of an inch from that center pin. This next one here is actually a fold. What we're going to do is pinch this, bring it across to create a fold at this pin here. Now, it depends on which way you like to work. You can either pinch this piece of fabric until it lines up with that pin and creates a fold and then secure that in place. Or you can actually just fold your fabric up to that pin and then fold the fabric back to this outside pin. Both will give you the same effect and then pin that in place. So what you have here is the center here and there's probably about an inch and a quarter gap inside. Then you've got another evenly spaced pleat and then you've got the rest of your fabric. Now, because I'm using a piece of fabric that is seven inches wide, I want to make sure that this will actually fit inside this. You can see that the toweling fabric fits, but there's no room for a seam allowance. If you find that your towel is just a little bit too wide, bring your pleats in a bit. And I would work from the center one, bring that in closer to the center. Do the same with this one, line it all up against your fabric and see how that looks. So you want to have at least a quarter of an inch seam allowance on either side. Doesn't matter if you end up with as much as half an inch seam allowance. Seam allowance is personal choice, but you want to make sure that you do have at least a quarter of an inch on the sides there. Pleating, it really doesn't matter what size you use as long as it fits inside your fabric. Now that we've got this lined up to the size that we want, we can take this to the machine and just stitch straight across. I'm just going to go and do that very quickly now. Okay, there we have our little pleat stitched up and we can set this aside for the time being. With our fabric that's interfaced, we want to put our magnetic closures on and I'm going to show you from the wrong side of the fabric because we won't see anything with the print there. From the wrong side of the fabric at the short edge, this piece is seven inches. I'm making a mark at three and a half inches in the, which is the center and one and a half inches from the bottom. This is where I'm going to put one side of my snap and then I'm going to come up seven inches from the bottom again in the center as well. So these are the two positions for my magnetic closures. As I said, if you don't have magnetic closures, you can use Velcro instead. So you can put that in place instead of the magnetic closures. So I've shown you the markings on the back of the fabric because this print is too busy to be able to show anything. So I'm just going to take those measurements around to the front. I forgot to record the part where we put the magnetic closure onto our fabric. So where I've marked that one and a half inches from the bottom, we'll put our closure there. And at seven inches, we'll place our closure there as well. Or you can put your Velcro piece. Now, if you're going to be sewing to sell, and you want to put a label on and you want the label to show up on the front, put your label past the eight inch mark. So anywhere in this quadrant here, this section will be the back of your cover. This will be the front fold over flap of your towel holder. So you've got your closures at one and a half and seven, and then between eight and say 12 inches. If you want your label on the front, that's whereabouts you'll put it. We've got our magnetic snaps or whatever closure you've used sitting right here. And we've got our fabric faced up. Take your towel and we're going to place that faced down over the short edge of the fabric. You can see that the edge of the towel is just sitting about a quarter of an inch or so inside the fabric. Take the other end and fold that across and pin that together. And when you're pinning this together, just make sure that the towel does actually sit inside. Because it's a soft toweling fabric, it does tend to stretch out a bit. So you can manipulate it to bring that in, line up the edges, pin the side edge together. And with the towel on the inside, tuck that in because we're going to be sewing up the side seam. You don't want to be stitching the towel in place. So pop some pins in on the side there. I'm going to leave an opening of about three inches on the side here. And on this side, I'll move the towel out of the way as well. All right, this is the end that the towel is going to be hanging out from when we're finished. We need to stitch across here and we need to sew up along both sides. Leave an opening on one side and we can turn it all through and then close it up later. 
So let's go and close this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to start sewing at the top edge of the fabric where the fold is and I'll back stitch, stitch all the way down to the end and you'll feel if the fabric from the towel is in the way as well so just make sure that's not getting stitched up on the side. Turn your work. If your towel's sticking out a little bit too far, you might just have to pop it in a bit. Coming up on this side here, again, make sure your towel isn't in the way. We'll come up a couple of inches, back stitch, and then we'll leave a gap of two to three inches. Back stitch again, and sew up to the end with a back stitch. We can clip our corners and just on the side there as well, go back to your opening and pull the towel out. Poke your corners out, tidy it all up and then we can top stitch all four edges and we'll close that opening up. Okay, I've got everything nice and even all the way around. Let's close this up. And we are completely finished. There we go. Your new hanging hand towel is completely finished. This one here has a magnetic closures on it. As I've mentioned, you can use Velcro in place instead. Or if you don't have either of those, you can just use these little snap fasteners as well. You'll just have to hand stitch those on. All you do is bring the top edge down and close that. Let's take it to the kitchen and see how it hangs. And there you have the little hanging towel just over the rail of the oven right there. Easy enough to put on. It's just a matter of undoing the snap and pulling it off. And you can put it back on just as easily as well when you're not holding your phone in your hand anyway. And there you have it. I've made myself a few of these today and I think they've turned out really well much quicker to make than the previous version that I've shown you. Just that little magnetic snap or Velcro or whichever closure you like fits over the rail of your oven nice and easily. These towels here with the print are a really cheap quality towel. So they worked out a dollar for one towel. And when you've cut them in half, it works out to be 50 cents. I have actually paid for the fabric in this one. I went to one of my suppliers the other day and bought a bolt of this beautiful Riley Blake fabric. It's gorgeous. So I have actually got costs with this particular product today, not to mention my magnetic snaps and my time and of course labels if I choose to put them on. I, um, I will actually go and put my labels on later on. So for the costs, one towel costs 50 cents, the fabric in this, um, by the time you work out the yardage, I can get two hand towels out of a strip of fabric. So that cost me about 50 cents as well. Retail, it's probably about a dollar, dollar fifty. Um, so I've got two dollars worth of material in here. Plus I've got the magnetic closure. And these ones were probably about 50 cents each. I buy them in bulk, usually off eBay or Amazon. So I buy them in bulk and that saves a lot of cost. So I think not more than $2.50 in product and then my labor. I can easily make one in 15 minutes. I put the clock on today and I was just playing around with it, made two in half an hour. I know that when I start cutting up lots more, I'll be able to improve my productivity to probably make about six of these an hour. So the other towels that I have in the shop already, they have a loop over the top of them. I successfully sell those in the shop for $15. These ones I'll be able to bring the price down to $10. Even if I buy a more expensive towel, um, it's probably only going to increase the cost by a dollar. So I'm going to put this newer version in my shop at $10 each. I might even actually package them up so that the customer buys two towels at a time, which will give me $20 each time. So it's a, it's a better way of generating quicker sales and selling more product as well. So I might give that a go, but 
I can't put these in the shop until I sell the last batch of the other towels because I can't have, well, maybe I can. I'll have to think about that. Can I put both of them in the shop and have one set selling for $10 and the other one selling for 15? I might have to have a think about that. If I use the cheaper fabric, sell that at $10, have the better quality fabric um, and sell that at $15, it might be a good experiment. Yes, I'll give it a go. <laughs> I'll keep you posted anyway. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you like this version of the hanging towels. And if you're sewing these to sell, I hope these are really profitable for you as well. I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.